so you're having trouble. I feel bad for you, son. Let's just do it. I'm gonna have to hold the camera though, because I don't have a stand, which is bollocks. Right, so first of all, fuck it. What you wanna do is you wanna get your condition one, and your two, and then you write X1 there, and X2 there, which basically means the value. And then you're gonna need to, fuck, this is so hard, you're gonna need to square it as well, so X2 square, okay, then how many values? Because I'm having to definitely not copy from another table I've already done, so it's one, two, ten. So we've got ten, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got ten. That goes across two. Hold on, bear with me a sec. Right, so Oof, this is awful. This is not working. Don't worry, it'll make sense in a minute. Basically, you want a table. You want a table. And draw some lines and shit. Oof, did I swear? Sorry, Mum. Right. Okay, so then, if you just let me input values from another table I've got, which is 32, 14, 23, 34. If you want to go through this as well, I'll hold the camera like that. So we've got 32, 14, 23 now by my reckoning I've missed out one two three four five six seven eight nine I've missed out one fucking bastard 32 14 23 34 45 39 ah missing out 23 I've missed out on that <coughs> okay <coughs> and then for the other values we've got 18 12 24 what the fuck is that? I think it's 21 I think it's 21 14 15 another 14 26 13 and 32 right. so if you need to add the pen because that was before right okay then what you'll get is you get an N. Now N N is the number of participants you've got in that condition. So N1 equals 10. And N2 also equals 10. Okay? Right. Then what you've got to do is you've got to add all these up, which equals... Yeah, I don't know what it equals. Um, let's just pretend that I worked it out. So I'll let you guys work it out. And then let's pretend that I got the mean from it. So the mean, which is this little symbol, called X bar. The mean for that happens to be 28.3. So that's your mean for condition 1. And then if we pretend that I worked this all out again for condition 2. So what you do is you just add them all up. And then divide the number you get by 10, because that's how you work out the mean. If you don't know that, you <coughs> should. Then we get the mean for that, which is x bar condition 2, which equaled 18.7. Okay? So those are your two sort of standard, your starting numbers, okay? Then what we want to do is we want to, because we have to square the x value, we have to square each of these. So let's do it in my head, shall I? That's 1024. This is totally in my head. I'm this clever. 196, 529, uh, 1156, uh, 2,025, 1,521, 529. One, nope, that's wrong, isn't it? Uh, 529 should not be there. That should be 169, my apologies. Uh, then 37 is 1369. 
and 23 is 529, 529. Okay, then you do that again for this side, so the values will be 324, yes, 144, 484, 441, 196, what, why did I even write that, 196, 225, 196 again, 676, 169, and 1024. <coughs> okay, so then you've got your, you've got your, all of these values squared, and all these values squared. Then, what you have to work out is this little beautiful figure here, it's a sigma, it means sum of, sum of your values for x1 squared. So if you add all these up, you get 9047. And then if you work out the sum of all these, which will be sigma sigma squared, that equals 3,879. Then, the final thing you need to work out with this little bit is all of the values for condition 1 squared. So you add all the values up, and then you square them, and then you have to work that out with this one too. This is so fucking hard to write and hold the camera, which is actually my iPhone. Okay, then what you do is, <coughs> then well, you just add all these up really, and uh, so when you were getting the mean, you could just times the mean by 10, couldn't you? So it's 283, I think, 28.3 times 10, yeah, 283, and you, you, squ well, you square that, which is 80,089, you have brilliant mental maths there, and this one, 187 squared is... 34,969. That's That seems like a bigger number. Okay? So, just recap it a sec. You've got N1, which is the number of participants, which is 10, and is the same for 2. You've got your mean of all these scores is 28.3. All of these scores added up, and then squared is 80,089. All of these values, which is those values squared, Add it up, equals 9047. And for this one, equals 10. The mean of these scores is 18.7. And yeah, all these scores added up and then squared is 34,969. And these scores, which are those scores squared, all added up, uh, equals 3,879. Okay? Now I'm just going to turn the page and Okay, so as you can see, I've written down all of the values. N1 equals 10. N1 is the number of participants in condition 1. Uh, the sum of all of the scores of 1 was 283. The mean of all the scores in condition 1 was 28.3. The sum of all of the scores and then squared for condition 1 was 80,089. And the sum of all the squared scores is 9,047. And the same things there for condition 2. So participants was 10. Sum of all the scores was 187, the mean was 18.7. No, the sum of all the scores then squared is 34,969, and the sum of all the squared scores is 3,879. This is the formula for T. Bloody hell, it's huge for an unrelated test. I'm sure you've got this figure on your screens. If you want to write that down, pause the video and write it down, and I'll get on. Right. <coughs> So what I've basically done is just put the values in there so you can see that um, this was 28.3. So I've literally just put all the values in. So uh, let's just finish up doing that now. So 10 plus 10 take 2. So that's number of participants 1, number of participants 2. So if you want to fill in yours now as well. So it's relatively easy if you just remember that... Uh, what the little scores mean, and you remember you've got these values to hand. It's really easy just to put the values in. So, 
I, you know, if your table, if it doesn't look like that, it should, and you obviously probably just mixed up these two because it's easy to mix them up, especially when you've got a little um, a little two and a big two, well, a square. <coughs> okay. So once you've done that, then you just have to literally multiply up these brackets first. Okay. So I did this because it was easy. Nine point six, and it's nine thousand forty-seven. Take. 80,089 divided by 10, which is 8,008.9. It's really easy to work out. Same again, it's 3,496.9. Um, then all of that over 20, take 2, because that's 10 plus 10. And then all of that times by, uh, what was it, 1, 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10. 1 divided by 10 is 0 0.1, so it's times 0 0.2. Okay? Yes, it is. Okay, so then you should have a table like that. And then what you do is you work out the brackets, these brackets and these brackets. So, again, 9.6. And you draw this big-ass line. And then you do this big-ass line. It should be noted that the square root extends all the way to the end. I said that. <coughs> okay. um, then it's so it's 9047 take 80 no 8008.9. You work that out. I work it out to be 1038.1. And then add that to this, 3,879, take 3,496.9, which I work out to be 382.1, and then that, that, over this little beauty, 10 plus 10, take 2, plus take 2, and uh, if you can't write that out, then please stop using the internet. Um, no, I'm kidding, of course. Um, that times by 0 0.2 again, because you don't want to complicate things too much, do you? So then, what you do is you work out this sum then, because all the while you're following this whole sort of bid mass system of like uh, brackets, indices, you know, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, that thing that we all got taught in school. So. 1000 no yeah 1038.1 plus 382.1 is 140 no it's 1420.2 divided by 18 I don't know why the line so long um, times by 0 0.2 that equals That equals uh, this 1420.2 divided by 18 equals uh, 78.9. Sorry, uh, times 0 0.2. That equals. Uh, so 789 times 0 0.2 equals 15.78 and then the square root of 15.78 is 3.97 9.6 divided by 3.97 equals 2.417 and that is your value for t. Then what you would do is you would look up the value. Should we look it up? Let's get the book. Hopefully we've got the critical values for t in here. Don't tell me when I use an open university book. Oh dear. Um, do critical value. Look at the colour of those papers. Um, tests. Why the bloody hell on? Significance level. 
table are critical values of each critical values of this critical values of that u got critical values of u that's not very handy at all is it um, values of w values of u values of u values of of something um values of x squared values of l values of h values of s values of t right now <clears throat> this particular uh, experiment that i was doing was a two-tailed test i think I think it was a two-tailed test, so what you would do is you go to this bit where it says levels of significance for a two-tailed test. Uh, psychologists use 0 0.05, and um, so then you need to find your degrees of freedom, which for this particular test is literally equals n1 plus n2, take 2, which is 18, so you find 18, which is there. Um, and 0 0.05 to 18 is that value, which is 2.101. And um, yep, and uh, t has to be your calculated t has to be bigger than or equal table t or critical t. For it to be significant, so 2.101 is obviously smaller than that, so that's significant. And that's how you'd work it out. Well, I certainly hope that helped with um, your t test working out. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, favorite, comment, tell me if someone went wrong, um, if it wasn't clear enough, let me know data or something um, but yeah I had to step to like one o'clock working it out myself so I could have done with a video like this and um, I think that's all there is to it really um, please like the video share it share it on Facebook Twitter the MySpace whatever it is you young people use these days and um, yeah I will uh, see you later my birdies Hola Anguilla cheers